of the championship playoff. But Villa are headed up. Darby County, more possession, more shots, more corners. But uh, in the end, nothing but disappointment for Frank Lampard's men. All right, Stevie, uh, Villa, a pretty prohibitive favorite going into this one. Was it a mm. close match? Was it a, a fair, a just result for you? I think so. I think the, the, the best team won uh, overall. You know, Derby, Derby really, for me, didn't come alive until the closing stages. They, they wait till the 2-0 down again. They did it against Leeds uh, in one of the playoff games, and they came back from that. But you can't expect to keep doing it. And So for me, yes, Aston Villa are a more stable side, uh, and I think... Not just in the playoffs, but during the course of the season, they've been better overall. Ali? I think what I saw from both teams is the nerves of what the moment was all about because we didn't really see the best of either of Aston Villa or Derby County, for that matter. Aston Villa, there were moments in which perhaps they could have been cleaner with the ball and made it a lot more comfortable for them towards the end. And you found that Derby County, simply because of the desperation of having to do something the last... 20, 25 minutes or so, they're pushing forward, disorganized, they're just trying to get something into the box, see what happens. They get a goal out of that, and from then on, Aston Villa was hanging on. And I mean barely hanging on, to the point to where you're saying, man, if Derby County gets a goal here and they go into extra time, this is, this is a whole different story. But Aston Villa did enough, and that's all they care about. They'll be in the Premier League next year. We'll see you guys later. Our last image of Villa in the Premier League is quite pathetic. Three years mm-hmm. ago, I think they were relegated you know, mid-April. This is a, a huge fan base, rich ownership, do you think they can stay up next season? Uh, if they don't add to this starting eleven, never mind the squad, then they'll be straight back down. Listen, the truth is, is that they have pretty much got championship players playing in the championship mm. who are going to go into the Premier League. And if they stick with that, it, it's not going to be enough. People keep throwing Wolves around. Wolves had Premier League players yeah. playing in the championship. That's the best way for me to describe it. So they have to go out and spend. And if they spend, they have to spend wisely. So they have to get those two things uh, to put into this side. Otherwise, they will come straight back down. The, the other thing that I think was important here from Aston Villa's perspective was the momentum that they generated late in the season to get into this playoff position and then carrying on that momentum onto here. There were moments in which Aston Villa essentially had to win or else, and they did that for a couple of months straight. And they haven't lost a game since we're, we're talking since March. And so it gives you an idea of how good they have been when they needed to be good. Today, not great, but good enough. They've also got a manager who's untested in the Premier League. Mm. Did a fantastic job coming in halfway through the season, but has no experience amongst the big boys. Yeah. Uh, speaking of managers, the, the other side of this is Frank Lampard. The, the kind of common thought is that if Derby didn't get promotion, he might end up taking over the job at Chelsea. Uh, Raf, we bring you in here. Uh, now that we know Derby isn't going up, is this more likely? Well, he himself said it's uh, no more or no less likely. Um, he was saying, look, I need to sit down with my uh, chairman to discuss what's happening next season. I have a contract here. And, of course, uh, you know, the subtext is that Sarri is still there. I mean, <laughs> the job might not be available. But what is true, I think, is that Chelsea, if contingency needs to be made, if Sarri gets an offer from Juventus and Juventus say, OK, here's the money for the release clause, then I think he would be very much in the conversation. As it is, I think, um, and other managers have shown this, he benefits from the fact that there is at least interest on the other side, and that will help him, I think, to have that conversation with the chairman to see, you know, how much money is available for next year, where are we going. So he is in a great position, but I think Chelsea don't necessarily want to appoint him because it would mean leaving, losing Sarri at this point. Let's speculate a little bit. Oh, hey, is that <laughs> uh, something we do? Uh, hypothetically, uh, sorry leaves. Would Lampard be a, the right choice for Chelsea? Mm. No, I don't think so. Not yet. So oh, sky. Just too green? Too green. Yeah. Absolutely, too green. You know, listen, it, it, it's, it's difficult to turn around and say, yes, get, go and get Frank Lampard. I've been, I've been sat here saying that why is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer getting the Man United job? Yeah. He has no CV to do that. And Chelsea's in the same bracket. Chelsea are a team that have to be in the top four, have to be playing a certain type of football, have to be competing at the very highest level. And the truth of the matter is, Frank's, Frank's just, just completely green as far as that's concerned. So, I, 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 it's a lovely theory story, but I think that's just where it is right now. You can make an argument that Frank Lampard has less of a CV than Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. 
uh, does at this point or did even yeah. before he took over Manchester United. And so if we're going through that uh, reasoning, then it, 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 it doesn't quite make sense just yet. It doesn't mean that it can't happen in the future, but not just yet. And, and by the way, I don't... If you continue to do the job that Frank Lampard has done with Derby County and he, he continues down that path, then I think the opportunities will be there, not only Chelsea, but everywhere else, because of the name that he carries and the opportunities that that name is going to open up for himself. But those opportunities only come when you have results out on the field. And if you're doing it at Derby County, then obviously people are going to say, well, if he can do it there, maybe he can do it in other places. Yeah, to that end, though, is it easy to replicate success in the championship? Like, a lot of what happened mm. with Darby seemed to be lightning in a bottle. He, his stock may be at its high point right now. Do you know what I think would be the hardest thing for Frank because, he's, because of his lack of experience? Is if Chelsea were to go through the type of period that Sarri went through with Chelsea. Mm. You know, when you're gaining experience, we all... We all we're all too busy looking at the field and looking at the way they're playing and the tactics and, and all the other stuff. But experience brings a mentality. When things are going great, you realise that, that you keep a level head. But when things are going badly, it's even more important you keep a level head. Frank, I don't think Frank has had any sort of experience like that yet. And he wouldn't be able to handle it, basically. Well, I, the other thing that you can make the argument for is the fact that if he looked in the mirror of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, he would learn that the honeymoon lasts about, eh, I would say, six weeks. Yeah. And then that's it. It's over. And it doesn't matter what history you've had with the, with the club, and it doesn't matter how many things you've achieved with the club. If the team is not playing well out on the field, then it, you're not Frankie Frankie Lampard anymore. You're like, what are you doing? And why are you making these decisions? And why are you playing Jorginho? You don't that's, think they'd cut him back of because he is Frank Lampard? You don't, you don't oh. think if things... He would be, a, I think, like a, a very good buffer. Yeah, but he wouldn't step in thinking he's going to be a buffer. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's going to step in thinking he's going to be the guy. And if the guy steps in and then after six weeks they're losing games left and right, then that's it. It doesn't matter what you did for the club. It, if, if Mourinho can lose some of his shine going back there... <laughs> Why yeah. wouldn't Frank? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Well, all this is because Mauricio Sarri has been linked to Juventus. Uh, Mauricio Pochettino has also mm. been linked to Juventus. Don't worry, Spurs fans. He said uh, today that he was 200% committed Ooh. to Spurs. That's uh, double 100%. He also spoke mm -hmm. about Harry Kane's fitness uh, during the Champions League media day this morning. I think Harry Kane is um, in the last week, Friday, Saturday, start to be involved with the group. Um, it's very positive, uh, the situation of him. I cannot tell you he's going to be fit 100%. He's going to be uh, available to play from the beginning or be on the bench or maybe out. out. Um, but we are so, so uh, positive and happy in the progression. Stevie, give us the uh, manager's perspective. What should Poch do here? <sighs> you know... The there's a completely different thing from being injured to being fit. Mm. Now, I didn't like... Up until, up until now, I've been saying, if Harry Kane's not injured, you just play him. From the start. From, play him from the start. And if he blows a gasket after 30 minutes, 40 minutes, whatever it is, you take him off. But listening to him there, that doesn't... If he's only just joined mm. the rest of the players on the field, he's going to be so far away. So now... My thinking is, well, you know what? Maybe you just keep this guy for desperation for the last 15, 20 minutes if you need it. Has, hasn't played since April 9th. This is a Champions League final. Like, how could he possibly be ready? Well, I, clearly he's not going to be 100%. That, that, but then we have to make the assessment of, well, it's 80% of Harry Kane better than the other alternative that you have. And in making that assessment, you also have to look at experiences from the past and learn from things that other managers and other decisions that other managers have made. In the case of Diego Costa and, and, and Diego Simeone, in, in deciding to play him in the Champions League final when there was an injury in place. And then, 10 minutes into the match, you have to take him off because he can't go. You don't want that to happen either. Now, the difference there is that that was a soft tissue injury. This is not. So if, if he is fully recovered from this injury and he's ready to go, I put him out there. But it's difficult to trust when you hear the manager say, well, he just joined. Mm -hmm. And that... I agree with Stevie. That's when you say, well, there hasn't been contact. There hasn't been... When he says he just joined, he's not, he's not getting the full training session that the other guys are because the progression usually is 
all right, he'll go through some of the drills, but it, it won't be 100%. And then eventually, as you go, you, you continue to Im involve him into the training session, and eventually he's full on. Mm. But that apparently hasn't happened yet. And, and, and if that's the case, then how do you put him out in a Champions League final? That's, that's, a, t that's a tough decision. Yeah. So maybe one of those where you just wait until, look, we need him out there. We'll put him out there in the last 25 minutes of the game and see what happens. Talk